Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kim. Welcome to my channel. So today I have a great example of how Combeam CT scan can be so useful. So for so many indications, in this case, it's an endodontic indications. So this radiograph uh, shows that gutta percha was placed uh, along the what appears to be sinus tract clinically. Um, so what I know is that this patient presented with some symptoms and clinically they located the symptom to be coming from um, as far as I understand coming from tooth number 15 also you can see this large restoration um, and then we'll be able to take a look at that as to how far this extends into the tooth and whether this extends into the pulpal space or not so we'll definitely be taking a look, in, look, taking a look at that as well but when they place this cone into the sinus tract, as you can see, this cone uh, appears to be leading to tooth number 16. So now the question the endo resident had was, um, despite the clinical presentation, well, could this problem be actually coming from this impacted tooth number 16? So that's um, uh, essentially the reason why Combeam CT was taken in order to provide an answer. Again, just imagine there are still a lot of you know, endodontists or an people without an access to Combeam CT and we've been doing endodontic procedures uh, for you know, decades without again having Combeam CT and when they see a radiograph like this, I, I'm kind of curious to know what they would have done, you know, whether that may have led to extraction of number 16 before addressing number uh, 15 or whether they just still presume that the pain was coming from number 15 and they would have done the root canal this first before doing uh, an extraction say of number 16. So this was really puzzling to our student and um, they actually let the patient go and brought back the patient about a month later and took this radiograph to see anything was different but yet again uh, it basically shows the same thing right uh, it's hard to visualize if there's any periapical infection or periapical radiolucency for uh, uh, for the location of the anatomy looks like we have superimposed zygomatic process of the maxilla in this case and part of the potential even zygoma and so uh, again our ability to visualize the apical region is highly uh, compromised and we look at this gutta percha yet again going toward the crown of number 16 so it, their next step was well I would like to take uh, you know they wanted to better visualize number 16 so they did their best to capture number 16 hence you can see all this you know cone cut images because that is their attempt to capture number 16 um, and actually it looks like we've lost uh, quite a bit of number 16 here on, on this particular image so despite their you know effort to take different angles of two-dimensional image it did not lead to any uh, useful information hence the comb mct was taken so i mean just ask yourself if this is what you had clinically and w what would you say to yourself you know um what would you do first would you do root canal of this or extraction of 16 um, would you have uh, gone with another step that I didn't uh, discuss just kind of ask yourself as we continue to um, now uh, look at this case more carefully so now I'm um, I'm looking at Combeam CT scan of the area and uh, without further ado pretty much this 3D rendering answers the questions that um, that we have basically. So looking at this 3D rendering, you can see the gutta percha extending right to the distal buccal region, okay, distal buccal root of number 15, and it actually extends nowhere near number 16, right? So this is where the 16 is, and that's where this stops, right? So you kind of have to ask yourself, oh, how did that create such a distorted view? Okay, so it's all about 
projection, the angle at which the beam was coming in and location of this in relationship to the angle of the beam as well as the uh, location of the sensor. So, you know, two-dimensional image is uh, in that way it's very compromised, right? Uh, it doesn't sometimes give you the true anatomic uh, representation of what's going on. So now let's take a look at this tooth in detail. There are a lot of information that we could not see before that we can see. So again, this highly radio-opaque uh, entity represents the gutta percha, which extends right to the radiolucency or and the perforation of the buccal cortex, which again was not seen uh, on radio on two-dimensional radiograph. So just to help us get oriented, what you're looking at is the mesial buccal root. Here's the distal buccal root, and that's the palatal root. And there is a perforation of the buccal cortex and the um, radiolucency that extends down to the apex of the distal buccal root. And I want to demonstrate that uh, in uh, using another views. So um, let me kind of reorient the volume just a little bit. So here what you're seeing in this coronal view is the distal buccal root and that's the palatal root. So distal buccal root and the periapical radiolucency that's uh, centered around the distal buccal and the radiolucency extends uh, uh, cervically or down along uh, in this direction, in this, yeah, in, oh, <laughs> excuse me, down the root. And, or you can say up the root and then cause the uh, perforation of the buccal cortex. So that's what we're seeing here. And if we scroll through the coronal volume, we can again see the radiolucency that's centered around the palatal root. So again, here's a palatal root, palatal root. And, and that's where the problem is. If we were to examine mesial buccal root, uh, we can see that there's no obvious uh, overt widening of the PDL space in that area. Okay, um, now what about number 16? So let's go to 16. And in number 16, uh, what we have is basically impacted uh, tooth with the disruption of the buccal, excuse me, alveolar crest just inferior to the crown, which is often seen in a lot of impacted tooth. So unless it's completely bony impacted, you often will see disruption of the alveolar crest in that area. So uh, um, that pretty much gave the definitive answer that we're looking for. Perhaps one more thing that I want to look at is how deep does this buccal restoration go into the tooth, right? So again, something that we could not tell from two-dimensional image, but we can with 3D. So let me hide the crosshair a little bit. You can already see from this coronal section that it does go into the tooth quite a bit. As a matter of fact, it goes right into the pulpal chamber. So that's the um, one of the canal. And this is the overall outline of the pulpal chamber, and it certainly invades or it goes into the pulpal chamber. There's no doubt about that. So let's see if we can uh, see that again in this coronal view here. Mesial buccal, distal buccal, and the restoration goes right into uh, this pulpal chamber or the root canals. And that can again be seen here. Right? So they essentially, um, that is the reason why the patient. Uh, is symptomatic at this tooth. Couple more thing, okay? This is really interesting thing, but let let me briefly go back to that radiograph. Um, let's see. So when you look at this, okay, <laughs> I want you to see the area of uh, missing number fourteen. How would you have evaluated this site? I mean, does it look good? Um, I really didn't mention much. But at a first glance, I think most of us will say this is completely healed ridge. The crest is intact. 
normal trabecular bone overall it looks pretty good okay I don't think many of us would question this sight perhaps some of you will and if you did that's fine and that's great if you did that but I wanna say most of us will say oh, it looks pretty good and really you wouldn't have questioned that sight much but let's look at the area of missing number 14 I mean it's very obvious unless you don't see it yet there's there's this elongated radial opacity right there's radial opacity let's put a crosshair mark right on that uh, and there it is let me rotate the volume this linear opacity and what does that look like to you and what would you suspect in an area of missing tooth that looks something like this and compare that the radio density of this to the adjacent tooth adjacent osseous structures and the fact that there's a thin radio loosen line going around it I mean what would be your number one differential diagnosis and I hope all of you will say that this is a retained root tip okay so if you did that that's great so this is a retained root tip and based on the location most likely representing this the buccal root tip of missing number 14 okay so yes that's what it is retained root tip and let me go back how how clearly is it seen on 2d not very clearly right we know the answer now so you can go back and say oh maybe there is a root tip in this region and that's fine and that's correct but again when you first saw this radiograph and patient presented with this would you have known that there's a root tip I think many of us will say probably not okay so that again brings out the difference between uh, 2D or advantages of using a three-dimensional imaging tool in this case Combim CT so hopefully you found something um, you learned something new and this was educational if you did please hit the like button and subscribe the channel and I'll continue to upload three videos every week and I'll see you guys next time thank you